Hello, welcome to the first episode, first long-awaited episode of uh, Parents That Swear. I am Bill. I'm joined by my wife, Stacy. Hello. And uh, yeah, just some background. Um, we were talking. It's been a long time we've been talking about this, actually. We decided to just pull the trigger and get it rolling, and uh, we'll figure some things out as we go along. But for the most part, I think we're good to go. Um, I spent a while building a set in the basement, and then my lovely wife, Stacy built this awesome fireplace, and I said, that looks like a better set, so let's <laughs> use that. Yes. So we moved it up here, and uh, now our living room kind of looks like a porn set, but <laughs> it's all good. At least it's not in a hotel room. I'm sure we're going to do a couple of those, get some awkward looks from, you know, room <laughs> service. But yeah, so parents that swear, it's, uh, you know, we wanted to have... Other parents come on the show, talk about their unique parenting situation. You know, everybody's got something different going on when it comes to parenting. And uh, what we don't want it to be really, though, is like another stiff, you know, show about like how to parent because uh, we're obviously not perfect parents ourselves. So who the fuck are we to give anybody advice? Right. But it's more of just have some drinks, have some fun, talk about our, our how we parent, like how our lives are as a parent. And then also uh, the funnest part is just talk shit about your kids without, <laughs> you know, you know, without having to worry about what some Karen at the PTO meeting is going to say when you, you know, say your kid's a bit of a dumbass, <laughs> you know, but yeah. So Stacy, do you want to introduce our first guest? Yes. So this is a very good friend of mine, Brittany. Um, mm. We have known each other for a few years now. Um, she's very much into working out. And that's how we kind of met at the gym. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, Brittany, do you want to, like, maybe just, I guess, talk a little bit about yourselves and, like, your kids and, like, lifestyle, you know? Yes. So I'm a single mom. I've been divorced for about a year. Um, it was a long, grueling, awful process. Um, but it's, it's good. Um, I've changed a lot. I feel like um, it's for the better, and I'm excited about the new chapter of my life and my kids are doing great um they kind of struggled with it at first um my son actually goes to see a therapist and yeah um that has helped a ton and they're doing great and yeah I'm excited yeah. to be here yeah we're <laughs> so happy to have you I mean um I actually know a few people that have been divorced and they've actually they put their kids in therapy too which I was like at first I was like wait what and I was like oh that makes a lot of sense because yes. there's a lot of change that happens in your life and then what they're used to, they're, they no longer have. And then, yeah, yes. just a, a lot of adjustment. I think he, like, I think my son specifically struggles with anxiety, and he was not knowing how to, like, express that. And so he was just, like, throwing a lot of temper tantrums. And then as a parent, you feel like you failed them, mm -hmm. and it's your fault because, you know, your marriage did not work out. But yeah. things are back on track. It's actually, like, having them having a therapist is an excellent resource. Yeah. He's excelling in school. All sorts of things. And also, also, I think that everybody, myself included, could benefit from a therapist. Nope, I mean, I, I was think. feeling a lot of things that I didn't know how to handle either mm -hmm. at the time. And, yeah. You know, actually, um, speaking of therapy, our oldest um, is in therapy as well oh. uh, for anxiety. Yeah. Same thing. Like, he's just incredibly anxious child and, like, just very... Yeah. He, uh, Brooks, our oldest, he... Uh... Yeah, very fidgety. Um, mm -hmm. There's also, I mean, a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, codependency. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On me, yeah. Yeah, and just very anxious about, like, what's happening? When's this going to happen? Can we do it now? And then also, um, and I mean, I understand kids are like this, but overly fidgety. Like, he's mm -hmm. always got to be, like, touching. Like, he'll just walk through the room, just touching everything yeah, mm -hmm. or, like, you like go to the store and he's just like touching, touching like, dude, like what are you doing? Or he's got to have something in like just chewing on the TV remote. Yeah. Or, you know. <laughs> okay. My kid's not the only crazy one. Yeah. <laughs> Mine does that mm -hmm. too. Okay. Yeah. Good. I thought, honestly, I was like, this has got to be a boy thing because yeah. my daughter and my nieces, I have four nieces. They don't do any of that, but he, he's the same way. He's just like, yeah, I don't know. It's just wired different. He's yeah. just busy. Yep. He's just Constantly. always busy. And I'm like, just breathe <laughs> mm, calm, yeah calm down and breathe <laughs> yeah so um our brooks's therapist told us like um when he is being super fidgety or sometimes he just walks around the house like just like slapping his hands like just just um just 
remind him like you need to have control of your body like control mm-hmm. of your movements like you don't need to be like is there is there a reason why and he'll be like no I don't know why I'm like okay think about your movements first and then make sure they're um like a purposeful one just don't be just it's been, yeah. it's been good he hasn't gone in a while though because it's so hard to get him I, in yeah. oh my goodness like I had to book like everything is like a chore now mm-hmm. like your own appointments the dentist yep. like going to the store it's just like everything's always busy like mm-hmm. it's, it's so time consuming it's expensive yeah like I as a single mom like I you know I have work three jobs and I have to take him to these appointments I yep. don't think their dad has ever taken them to any doctor's appointments and so it's just like it's one more thing on you have to do of. on your list so I like booked all my appointments out for him like a month and a half because I was like this is a priority mm-hmm. for me and like it, it he looks forward to it and it yeah. helps him and it's just setting him up for success yes. especially with like starting school he was getting very anxious about a new routine a new place mm-hmm. new people and so he was like kind of testing the waters a little bit and so I feel like he was being extra naughty and I got him back into therapy and that just reset him yeah and he just looks forward to it like we go bi-weekly and it's awesome that's good I think everybody should do it turn your kids up <laughs> yeah did, uh, did the anxiety, was it there pre-divorce or did it come after? Did it increase during? I think it definitely came after. Mm-hmm. Like my daughter was so young. So Clayton was like mm, three-ish mm-hmm. and Sawyer was probably about a year. But she, I mean, there was always problems. I feel right. like that led up before our um, separation, you know, but definitely the anxiety got worse like Mm -hmm. just the outbreaks and the temper tantrums and it was just like the smallest thing would Mm -hmm. trigger the biggest reaction and I'm like bro like your cracker fell on the floor like calm down (laughs) we can get another one (laughs) pick it up like so it definitely Mm -hmm. increased a lot after yeah I could see that yeah Brooks would have those like Mm -hmm. and that has therapy helped with that but yeah he just like the smallest thing just Mm -hmm. and not so much like an inconvenience like a cracker falling on the floor but like if it was he's he's not the greatest for listening to parents especially me <laughs> to the point where it's like the third time i'm having to ask him something i have to like raise my voice to get his attention mm-hmm. sure then all of a sudden it's like he like just melts down like why are you yelling at me like mm-hmm. oh, and like would run to like everybody in this house hates me runs yeah. upstairs mm-hmm. slams the door yeah, yeah. and <laughs> i'm like dramatic. i'm just trying yeah. to like tell you dinner's ready man like <laughs> yeah. sorry for being such an asshole <laughs> yeah but whatever but i think part of it too like with, with brooks at least is that like, we've noticed like when he doesn't nap he's just like same it's it's really like today for example for this show like i i hate to say it but i had to give him melatonin to put him down for a nap i was like if i don't he won't he'll fight it yep and he'll be with his aunt which is my sister and i'm he'll be a pill for her and i'm Mm -hmm. like oh i don't want Mm -hmm. her to have to deal with that because then she won't want to keep him next time (laughs) so i had to give him him up (laughs) yeah yeah i mean i have to because he has such high anxiety at night too Mm -hmm. like he will not go to sleep unless he knows i'm upstairs too like watching tv which I do anyway, so it's not a big deal. But mm-hmm. sometimes I want to come down and, like, eat, you know? Yeah. I'm a late-night snacker. Same. So, like, same girl. Yeah. <laughs> so then, like, he um, will wake up and come to the stairs. I'm like, why are you not up here? And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, can I go to the bathroom? Can I? Like, I am eating. Like, I didn't eat with you today. Like, I'm, I'm eating. And he's like, but I, it's just, but I hear you and Daddy laughing. Like, have a good time down there. I'm like. We're enjoying each other's company, go to man. Bed. Like, go to sleep now. <laughs> yes. Have you seen that book or read that book, Go to Bed, Fucker, or whatever? No. Oh, uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Yes. Right. Yeah, I've, I've, no. read, I've seen it there. I've never read it. I've seen him read it, and it's Go the Fuck to Sleep. Yes, that's oh, it. Well, that's what we say that's to him all it. the time, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, we'll know what you'll be getting you for Christmas. I know, yes. <laughs> go read your book, bro. I know, yeah. Go the fuck Definitely. to sleep. Definitely. Well, then he's going to be... We've already had that problem. I was... I was in Nashville about a year ago helping out some friends with another podcast and uh, I was live on air and Stacy's just blowing up my phone. So I'm like, Oh shit. Like maybe something's wrong with the kids. Like, so I was like, we're live. And I was like, sorry guys, I got to hop off of here and go answer this call. Come in. Guess what (laughs) your son did. I'm like, "Uh, this better be good. But what? (laughs) And she's like, Apparently, he was over here on the playground telling another kid to shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. So. At least he used it in the right context. Yes, I know. I know. And so when I told him that, Bill was like, well, where do you think he's heard that from? And I'm like, 
that's not the point. <laughs> the point is he cannot repeat the. He heard it from me because I have. Like, I hate to say this, say but that. I have said this before to my kids when I'm like at that level mm -hmm. where I'm so done mm -hmm. that like I will just start. Yeah. Oh, yeah, saying horrible yeah. things. F bombs to him. Oh, everywhere. Yeah. You get an F bomb. Yes. Yeah. F -bomb. Yes. <laughs> threats, threats of violence. And, uh, yes. But yeah. So anyway, so I hang up the phone and go back out there and uh, like the Pius said, a bunch of dirt bags on Drinking Bros podcast. So I was like, oh yeah, like apparently my six year old told somebody to shut the fuck up on the playground, <laughs> and their response, of course, is like, kid probably need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, like yeah, there's that. But yeah, so. I mean, we talk about how we struggle to have the, like with his anxiety, get him to go to bed at night. And you talk about like just going to the bathroom, like being a single mom. Like if you started trying to like create some sort of system where the two of them can work together so you can just get shit done around the house. You know what? I have. It's not working together, but there's this thing. And I, I don't care. Judge me if you want iPads. <laughs> oh my God, no, That's how we're the I same get way. Shit done. Oh, yes, yeah. no, we're the <laughs> yeah. exact same That's way. That's gonna be probably a big point on this show, you know, because like anybody's like, my, we don't give our kids iPads, blah blah. blah. Yeah. Like, well, they must give them like Nyquil every thirty seconds or something. Cause right. Like, or like, or when do you have time for your like? Because I think about it, because as a mom, as you, you know, you get it. Like, you know, you have to clean the house, you have to do laundry, you have to cook dinner, you have to like make the beds, but brush their teeth, like yeah. showers, like do like just so much around the house. And it's like, if they can't entertain themselves, when do you get that done? When they're mm -hmm. in bed? Great. So then when do you ever have time for yourself for you. just to yeah. decompress and like yep. take it all in like your day? Like that's my thing. Like thankfully like Bill is definitely 50% involved in like our relationship with the co like not well, no, co-parenting. Co yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know if I'd be, yeah. So but I'm a live-in co-parent. Yes. <laughs> Thankfully, like we have a really good routine, and he helps out a lot. So it, it's not so hard for me. But like, there's times where I'm just like, I, I need a moment yes, to myself. Absolutely. So that's when, you know, thankfully our new house has a couple TV rooms. So like, if I want to watch my show while I'm cleaning and cooking, they can. One can be in that room. One can be on an iPad. One can have their switch, and then we just, either way, they're entertained by something because yes. yeah, we just need. Time yeah. I mean, obviously, the the goal is to like engage with your children, mm -hmm. but sometimes you just can't. Like mm -hmm. you, well, you can't. you can't engage your cooking dinner, you no. know, or folding laundry, you right. know. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I agree with you or, on that. Or yeah, like try going out to fucking eat without an iPad. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know that like, is good tough. God. It's painful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, that's yeah. rough. They're I just know. I miss the days when like they couldn't talk, and you just like shoved poofs. Oh <laughs> in front yeah, of them. They yeah. just shoved their yeah. mouth full of poofs, or like just chew on a straw. They didn't not a care in the yep. world. They sit there forever. I know. Now they're like, where are we going after this? What are we having for dessert? Yeah. What am I wearing tomorrow? What mm -hmm. do I go to the library? I'm like, ah, just eat your French fries. I know. <laughs> or I know. the one word that I despise in this house now, snack. Oh, oh gosh. Like it's I'm like just like a pro professional snack fetcher and short order <laughs> cook around here. Like snacks, snacks. Are yep. your kids are your kids like that? Oh heck yeah. That's all they want to do. Is yeah. Literally I pick Clayton up from school and he's like, I'm hungry. I'm like, I know you had a snack. Mm -hmm. Uh what what do you want me to do about it? And he's yeah. like, Well, I think we need to go home and have a snack. I'm like, I'm gonna go home and make dinner. No, I need to have a snack. Like he just yeah. snack, 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 snack. And Sawyer Sawyer's my good one. She eats so healthy she's i think she's gonna be like a vegetarian mm -hmm. or something she doesn't really care for meat but she goes and gets like peppers out of like green peppers out of the fridge and eats them like an apple Aww, that like is she good. the other day for breakfast she asked me for ham slices raspberries and a cucumber that's good <laughs> she's three yeah. <laughs> i'm like okay and clayton's like give me the s'more pop tart <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's so I'm funny like, all right yeah. you're definitely mine <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah yeah we definitely have to like sneak candy into oh the house. yes mm -hmm. like, same yeah because if, if they know where it's at it's candy 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 oh candy, yeah candy. i've actually i have like these uh edible chocolates and mm. i have had to hide those puppies because yeah. i'm like they don't miss anything they know where all the hiding spots are so i have to like put them behind like 10 things yeah because like, they don't know way out of reach yeah. because like the it's crazy i'll open a cupboard and they'll be like what's that i'm like what and then I'm like oh shit I forgot I had that oh <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, that's the Halloween candy from last year yeah but oh it's crazy the stuff they acknowledge mm -hmm. I know yeah definitely mm -hmm. um 
I was going to say when it comes to healthy eating, um, I think we're very fortunate. I mean, don't get me wrong. Our kids love s'mores Pop-Tarts <laughs> and candy and ice cream. I do too. <laughs> but they also really like cucumber. Like they are big vegetable eaters. Like, love that. Like every meal. And I think it's because I incorporated that because growing up, like I, my mom used to always feed me vegetables with every meal. Mm-hmm. And so when I make them like lunches or dinner, even if it's like, um, mac and cheese, like easy mac. Like I will like warm up some green beans or like air fry some broccoli yes. and like cut up some fresh fruit. Whereas like Bill, they'll be like they want chicken noodle soup. He just like pours into a can and gives them that, and that's mm-hmm. it. And I'm like, where's like the that? He's yeah. like, it's soup. And I'm like, no, the the worst one. They're not, not saying the worst, but the thing with giving them vegetables and stuff. See what Brittany thinks about this. Pizza. Do they need vegetables with pizza? Pizza is its own meal. No, they just need ranch. <laughs> Well, I do that in marinara, but I will, I will like cook some like c- like corn on the side or like, or even like even when it's like spaghetti. She's like, what do they need? They gotta have three things. And I was like, well, that does make sense, but for me, this is just my opinion. Only pizza because then you have more room for pizza, less room that's for true. for the veggies. But yeah. but that's just me being a fat ass. Because <laughs> I really like pizza and yeah, ranch. Yeah. ranch. We're ran- we're ranch family, whereas yes. I call it Eagles Milk. Eagles Milk. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so I do want to ask, I know a little bit about this cause we talk about it, but being a single parent with two children, like how do you juggle time for obviously your children and then also your social life and then your like personal life? Uh, it's a shit show. Yeah. It is so hard. Like I like have people get frustrated with me because just, I want to like give, I want to say yes to everything and mm-hmm. I have huge FOMO of like missing out on on things that I, I can't be a part of. And I have a really bad problem of committing over committing mm-hmm. myself. Um, but it is hard. Like I, I am a type A person. I'm a planner. Like, and I know you're the same way. Mm-hmm. Like I function so well with a schedule and a plan and a system. And so that's what has really like helped me. Like, it sounds crazy. Like the guy that I'm dating, like he doesn't have kids. Like he doesn't really have anything like attached to it. he's a dog but like he just fly by the seat of your pants yeah. and you can't do that and so sometimes like we don't really butt heads but he's very good at understanding how I am as a person but like it's just way different but for me having a calendar booking like things like a month out it sounds stupid but I'm the same way that's what works for me mm-hmm. and it's hard working so many jobs but the way that I look at it is like I'm rather be making money than spending money mm-hmm. and it keeps me out of trouble and yep. it's it's getting me back to where I want to be and it is hard. I do the my one guilty pleasure, or it's not even really guilty, but the one thing I always do for myself is I go to the gym every mm. single day and that I I won't ever give that up. That's yeah. just to me that's the most impor- important part of me. So mm. I definitely make that a priority going every day, but being like having to like spread my time between friends I have so many friends and so it's it's very hard to like please everybody Mm -hmm. and then also like my top priority is being an awesome mom and so it is it's hard I mean everybody no I not just single moms like have it hard like no I mean I I mean you're I think you're lucky in a way like you're um the system you and Eric have like with keeping the kids I think it's nice because it kind of gives you a break where you don't have your kids for a few days especially on the weekends and then I think that that can be a time where you can focus on yourself, your friends, and then like your household, and then also uninterrupted. Yes. And also your boyfriend. So yes. I think it's really nice um, that you have that. Yes. And I think like when I think back to my previous situation when I was married, I just he's a great dad. Um, we we just did not work well together. Mm-hmm. But I think to myself all the time like. And this is sad. I mean, or bad. I don't know. One or the other. Maybe it's both. But I think, like, married people, like, I don't ever remember getting a break. Yeah. Like, when I was married, like, I don't remember ever getting one. Like, Mm -hmm. it was always us as a family. I had my kids 24-7 or it was just me having my kids. Mm -hmm. And so it's just nice to have, just have to only worry about me. Right. For a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. I get to recharge my batteries, be a better mom. Like the next time I get my Mm -hmm. kids back and I, I was find myself thinking about that all the time. I'm like, if I was where I was back then today, like 
I would I feel like I'd be an awful mom because I never yeah got a break ever no I get that and I think um I think a lot of parents kind of relate to that because I know like we're like married obviously and, like like I said Bill's very 50 percent present in our you know household like but there's still like discussions and like sometimes I don't want to say arguments but like I guess kind of an argument. We just don't. Really, arguments. People, we don't like. Really, I know. I just mean like we don't really raise our voice. Like we just communicate with each other about. But but a lot of it is like I sometimes feel like I don't get a break. Like mm-hmm. I have my youngest with me at work all day, and then mm-hmm. um, in the mornings I get my kids ready for school and like I make their beds. I make them like a full breakfast, and then I take our oldest to school, and then my youngest comes with me to work, and then he's with me all day. Then I come home, and then it's like granted. Bill's typically making dinner, which mm-hmm. is nice. So then, and 50% of the time, the, like, Brooks, our oldest, is already showered. So that helps. Then I do Graham. And then it's just constant, like, every time they want anything, like a snack or a refill of their water, whatever. It's always yes. mom. It's like, and I could be upstairs doing laundry. And the, and Bill will be, like, right here just, uh-huh. like, why don't you ask your dad? Yeah. There are two people well, in this household. Uh, like I'll even be, like, they'll be, like, going upstairs. Mom, like, I, what do you need? I'm yeah, right here. Yeah. Mom, mom's like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and I'm trying to give her a break. I know she needs it. Right. Let her rewind. Because, you know, when she's rewound, it helps things out. It spills over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yep. but yeah. But yeah, speaking of that, like, she takes the uh, oldest to school. And then, because, well, she does all that in the morning because I have to go to work early in the mornings because of mm-hmm. the bullshit school schedule. Yeah. Oh, the elementary yeah. school. And, oh, yeah. You know, you, your son goes to the same school as ours. And yes. It's like, How do parents work? Like, I don't know. Thank gosh. I actually signed my kids up for the before and after school. I mean, it was hell, but I had to wake up early and beat four other parents to signing up for it for one spot, but got mm-hmm. it. That's my only saving grace is having yeah. that before and after school care. Yeah. So. But also, like, not feeling guilty. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of times, like, when I would take, when I was married, I would take time for myself. I'd go, you know, the winery with my mom or, like, go on a little weekend girls trip. I constantly felt guilty. Like, I, sh- like, I sh- wasn't, something was not fulfilling me because right. I don't yes. have my kids attached to my mm-hmm. hip. Like, and that's awful. Women should not feel, no parent should feel that way. Yeah. You sh- when you leave and you have time for you, you should Mm-hmm. Not think about your kids. Sorry. Yeah. No, <laughs> but I that's know. the way that it should be. Yeah. So that's something that I always struggled with being married just because I just felt like they depend on me forever. I mean, they're only so little and that you like you're their number one for a short amount of time. And so I just had severe mom guilt when I would take take time for myself. Now that they're older, I'm like, get out of here. Let's yeah. go play. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. Yeah, I can see that, the mom guilt thing. I, I felt like that too sometimes. But then I would always talk myself into being like, no, I should not feel guilty because I do everything. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, the dad could take like take over. Like, it, it's fine. Like, it's going to be fine. Yeah. So. I know. Part of it is we're control freaks, too. Mm-hmm. Nobody does it as well as we do. No. I'm sorry. That's no. just the way it is. We don't I make know. the rules. That's just the way it is. It is <laughs> so true. So that's me. I have trouble. Like, I can ask my ex-husband to do something, and it, I will literally tell him word for word what to do, and it still won't be right. I I'm. I mean, he – poor guy. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I'll come home, and, like, he would make dinner for the kids, and they're, like, not eating it. And I'm like, what? what's wrong with it and like i look at it like mac and cheese that's like still cl- i'm like <laughs> Bill's over there and like, then like what <laughs> well that's be- that i know what you're talking about that was the other day that's because that's because he asked for mac and cheese i made it for him and he just like sat there like until it was like four she got home 40 minutes later he still hasn't eaten it i was like yeah <laughs> it's dry because it's been there for 40 minutes <laughs> but there is like you know chicken noodle soup like well I take the carrots out of Brooks's and put them in Graham's. <laughs> and I do this. And like, they want, Graham wants this much broth and Brooks wants this much. So I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because I make their food all the time. So I know exactly, like, Brooks doesn't like cooked carrots. So when I open up a can of tuna soup, I give him, like, the noodles, the chicken broth. But Graham loves to cook carrots. So I just give him all the cooked carrots. Oh, and yeah, we also need to, we're talking about carrots. We need to specify they won't eat, like, the shitty, like, Campbell's. Oh, yeah, It's no. got to be the progresso with the egg noodles and the yeah. big carrots and the celery. Mm-hmm. Damn. Okay, yeah. my kids eat dirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, the other day, Sawyer picked a Skittle up off the ground that I'm pretty sure was there from like three days before that. That when, like, my ex-husband dropped the kids off, a Skittle, I think, rolled out of the truck. Three days later, Sawyer picked it up. 
put it in her mouth. I'm like, did you? Yep. Oh my god. I'm like, whatever. We're building that immune yeah, system. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Her and Stacy would get along. Stacy just like picked stuff up off the floor and put it in her mouth. And she's like, I that do. wasn't food. I'm like, what are you doing? I do. I don't know why I do that. I I just did it the other day. Actually, I was cutting up an apple and I was like cleaning the countertop and like there's like like I thought what was like salt on my hands. I licked it and I was like, or, like that detergent was not. or something. Like, I don't know what it was. Fucking anthrax. I don't know. But it was not salt. And I was like, that's disgusting. But I do all the time. Like I'll be cleaning. I like, pick up like put my, it. And Bill's like, did you just put that in your mouth? And I was like, yeah, I thought it was a pretzel, but I don't really know what it was, actually. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. What? <laughs> I was just like, well, yeah, what are you doing? Like, at least smell it. Give it the smell test first. What was the other day? You said you found like a like an M&M in your jacket pocket or something? Oh, I did. And they were kind of soft, like too. They were actually M&Ms. I remember putting them, they're the peanut ones. I remember putting them in my jacket pocket because I was leaving the house and I wanted the kids to see me having them then they would want them and I want to share. Yes. So my jacket, and then, like, I guess I forgot about it and then, like, a week or two goes by and I put that jacket back on and I was like, what? I'm like, ooh. And they were, like, kind of softening so it got a little hot and I was like, oh, my God. They taste good, though. Like, I'm down. <laughs> So this is who I live with. <laughs> One of these days you're gonna like the dog's gonna track some shit in and it's like yeah. literal shit in. She's gonna like, be a chocolate chip. I am. <laughs> like yeah. what's the movie? Isn't there a movie? She's like, is that poop or chocolate? Yes, oh. there is. I that's the first thing I thought of when we were talking about that. But also, I do not like sharing anything either. Like we just literally, I just posted something on Facebook about this the other day. My son, I was prepping his meal and I literally took two blueberries off of his plate two and he was like geez those are i prepped the meal let me tell you i bought the blueberries yeah and he was like those are mine what do you do eat other people's food at work <gasps> geez and he was like grilling me and i was like well i ate them because i carried you for nine months i injected myself with shots for 12 weeks for ivf and i was like and i share everything with you yeah and then he gave me one blueberry and he was like fine you can uh, have it. I was like, okay, thanks. Oh but he was pissed God. off about it. That is so But funny. I was like, come on, buddy. It's uh, great. They want everything you have, but when it comes time to share what they have, mm -hmm. oh, heck no. Oh, I know. That, and they've already eaten three breakfasts, and I sit down to eat my one breakfast, mm -hmm. and they're like, we want that. What is that? I'm like, get your fingers oh, yeah. off my peanut butter. And I know you're very, like, um... When you like make your breakfasts, like you see, I see it on like yes. social, like you like put down exactly what I measure everything. Yes. Yes. So when they take that one a little, you're like, oh my God. I know I need that <laughs> yeah. five calories that was going to get me through to 11 <laughs> yeah. o'clock. Yeah. I get yeah, that. Yeah, I just, it's hard. And then like, yeah, when you're trying to stick to nutrition, like you look forward to your mm -hmm. meals a little more yeah. and you get a lot more greedier and especially, yeah, candy. Like who likes to share candy? Not I know. Me. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Luckily, being the dad, I get to mark that down as dad tax. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and it's yeah. a bitch. I dad tax is that. a bitch. You'll I learn. Know. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I went to, I went out with a girlfriend last night, and they brought her a drink to the table, and I was like, it's okay. It's not roofied. Like, I sampled it, and she's like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, what? I'm just looking out for you, girl. Right? I know. We need and, one of those. And then behind, like, when she turned around, you're like, damn it, not roofied. <laughs> don't have a good night tonight. <laughs> don't have the kids. You get weird. Let's go. <laughs> but I, I saw this meme real quick. I saw this meme that was like some chick eating um, ice cream, and the kid was like, "What's that?" And she was like, "Nothing. It's spicy. You won't like it." I'm like, "Oh that yeah, is so mean. Yes. I say everything spicy. I do that except too. now. My kids are like they like spicy mm -hmm. stuff. Hotter the better. And I'm like. Shit, that's not backfire. My next thing is it has alcohol. That's, can't yeah. touch it. Mostly, it's, it's got alcohol in it. Oh, yeah. good idea. I'm yeah. gonna start using that Which, one. To be fair, again, this is parents that swear, so this is like we call it dirtbag parenting. What we do, <laughs> but uh, it's like I wonder if all this like, oh, it's got alcohol in it, is gonna have like some sort of effect on our kids when they're older. I know. You know, <laughs> like maybe that's the hereditary part of alcoholism. It's just like oh, everything got alcohol in it. I guess just everything. They're gonna uh, think every bag of Skittles yeah. has alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I can't have that that has alcohol in it. <laughs> and then, like, they tell other people, and, and like those parents are going to be like, what yeah. kind of parents? Like, do you, like, either that, they'll be like, wow, ah, we know that one. Know yeah. That one. Yeah. It goes one of two ways. Yeah. My favorite is um, Brooks doesn't go to school daycare anymore with me, but um, he one day was there. I think he was like 
sick or maybe he had a day off. I don't remember. Early out thing or something. Yeah, yeah, and he just was there for a few hours, and I was just drinking like a Lacroix, which I never drink Lacroix unless I'm mixing it with vodka. But I was just <laughs> wanting something bubbly, and also I'm at work, so I cannot be obviously drinking. Um, but I wanted something bubbly and that wasn't like high in sugar. Mm-hmm. And my mom's a big Lacroix person, so I was like, drinking one and. Um, a parent walked in and he walked downstairs cause Bill was about to come pick him up. And he's like, he's like, are you drinking a LaCroix? And I was like, yeah, I mean, and it's kind of weird cause I don't, and I was like, yeah. And he goes, is there alcohol in it? I was like, no, no, <laughs> there's actually not alcohol in this. Like, oh my God. Not yet. Like, I know. Yeah. Wait until I get home. I know. Wait until I get home. I get room for the alcohol in it. Yeah. I but I was like. <sighs> what, like, you got any? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like one mom walked in and she like, looked at me. And I was like, I want to, like, do you want to smell my can? Because I really, if there's nothing in it. But like, in all fairness, I never drink LaCroix unless Easy, it's, it's my lunch break, okay? I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Mind your business, yeah. Karen. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, we do that. Like, it's kind of like the stuff that inspired us to do this show is like, our kids have like power wheels. They call them their pugs for mm-hmm. long, weird reason. But uh, they're like gators, like yeah, John like John Deere Gator, oh, gator yeah, yeah. power wheels. Yeah. And we'll take them around the new neighborhood here. Mm-hmm. And before we do that, it's now it's just like almost like <laughs> a ritual. It's like, hold on, we have to get drinks. So we get yeah. like, we get yeah. the, the Yeti tumblers out and have yeah. vodka Lacroix. Yeah, we take a shot of Fireball before we go. Yeah, like our, we do everything actually, which I'm kind of like. What do we, we like, um, took to the pumpkin patch like two weeks ago, like before it was like 8, 9 a.m. Before we like left the house. Yeah, I need a shot. Like we took a shot and Brooks is just like hanging out with us on the table, like on the island, just like, like it's just so, no big deal. I was like, oh, okay, like, we, I, oh yeah, get your fireball. Let's go, guys. And I'm like, oh my God. But yeah, so like, I think I sent that to you, like some, I was on like Instagram, some parent page on Instagram and the dad's like, reaching up he's like hey babe do you want to do like a shot of tequila you know get the levels right before we go and you hear <laughs> off screen like we're going to the playground <laughs> fill her up yeah oh. so yeah have you ever done that you had drinks out of the playground before um i definitely used to kind of do the same thing mm-hmm. when i lived at our old house like it, i lived on a cul-de-sac and that's like we would just like kill kill the grass around there going round and round yeah. and around and the same we would like Put a bottle of wine in the back of Clayton's little. Yeah. Uh, he has a truck, mm-hmm. and we just put it back there along with a couple stuffies and cruise around. Yeah. And, yep. Just fill her up all the time. I know. Yeah. That's <laughs> cool. Yeah. Snacks and wine. Yeah. <laughs> um, when we went to that our first play day at that nice park out in Waukee. Yes. I actually in my cooler I had some seltzers some for us. Oh, oh I yeah. did, oh. but I didn't know like. Because it's been a while since we've seen each other. And yeah. also, it's a new park. I just didn't know, like, you know. And so also, I, I have a breathalyzer in my car. So that well, I didn't know. Good. I didn't know at the time, in all fairness. I did not know that. So you might have been taking me home. Now yeah. Too. Yeah. I just said I have a problem saying no. <laughs> I, know. I know. Well, I told him. I was telling Bill. I was like, every, like the past couple of times, like, I have kind of thrown out there with Brittany. Like, I want to hang out. Like, go drink. And she's kind of, like, not, like, not saying no, but also not, like, really excited about it. And I was like. I, and then I was like, I, I wonder why. Maybe it's just because, you know, we haven't seen each other in a while. And then I saw that, and I was like, now I know why. Because when we hang out, we I'm go hard. I'm excited about it. It's just a process. Like, I know. It's an extra step to plan. Like, mm-hmm. how am I going to get there? How am I going to get home? How many yep. drinks can I have? Yep. Should I eat? Like, yep. it's a whole thing. But I'm down. I'm always down <laughs> yeah. for drinks. Yeah. yeah. So, margaritas. Oh, yeah. I went back to El Guapo with my mom. On, oh, yeah. How um, was that? It was good. So You didn't get roofied? No. So she had roofie last time. Yes. At, at El Guapo? Yes. It was the strangest thing. Okay. So I went there with two girls and I literally, we all had one margarita and I was fine. And then I ordered one more margarita and I split it with, it was my sister and my best friend. And I split it with my sister. I tried to give some to my friend, Randy, and she's like, no, I don't, I don't want another one. So my sister and I split it. We both, like, I don't remember how I got home. My sister drove me, but I don't remember how I got home. And I woke up to Eric coming over, tapping me. I was face first on my bathroom floor. He was tapping me on the shoulder, and he was like, Crit, what happened here? Like, I puked all over the place. I'm like, I have no idea. At first, I blamed the cat. I was like, it wasn't me. It was Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's in your hair. <laughs> it was not the cat. Yeah. I was like, Okay, busted. <laughs> but then the next morning, I called my sister, and sh- I was like, oh, my gosh, the craziest thing happened to me last night. And she goes, okay. And I said, I, like, don't remember anything. And I woke up face first in my bathroom. She goes, oh, my God, me too. And I'm like, get out. 
come on, I can drink like six margaritas. Yeah, I'm about to say. Like El Guapos are really, really, really strong, mm-hmm. and I love that about them. But I drank one and a half, and I have never felt that way in my life. Yeah. And like the next day, I was just super. It was like way worse than a hangover, mm-hmm. and it was weird that we had the same. And Randy felt fine. Yeah. And so I don't know. Maybe I don't know that. Maybe I wasn't. I'm probably. I don't know though. I mean, that's pretty. I. I, I mean, I hate to pass judgment. I still went back, okay? <laughs> I still went back to make sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I went there with my mom, and I was not roofied this time. Yeah. And it was just weird. So I hadn't been back for, since then because mm-hmm. I was just kind of scared. And I, nothing like that, like that, surprisingly, has never, ever happened before. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I made it to 35. <laughs> I'm <getting> right. <laughs> I know. I mean, I guess it's definitely possible. I, mem- I remember you telling me that. I'm like, really? Yes. My mom's like, let's go there. They won't roofie an old lady. I was like, okay. <laughs> Sign me up. Twist my arm. Right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's weird. I've, I've had things, similar things happen before where it's just like, I did not drink near enough for any of yeah. this to happen. But maybe sometimes your body just does weird fucking yeah. shit. But yeah. If you I, and your could, sister both did it. Yeah. Sounds that, like something. The common denominator there is the drinks. Right. So. It was just weird. And then Randy was like. The bartender was a little sketchy. Like, she was like, I was ready to leave. Like, and I I honestly don't remember. And she said, like, I just, she's like, I know you when you're drunk. You're silly. You're fun. Like, you're a good time. She's like, you just went, like, mad. Yeah. Like, you were just angry all of a sudden. Nobody knows what you were mad about. But you were like, time to go home. And you were just mad. And your sister took you home. I'm like, this is the craziest thing ever. Yeah. So, oh but. Oh, gosh. Huh. Yeah. Maybe that last, that half margarita was just enough for Send Brittany to over. have a breakdown. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, guess, I got some pretty good pictures that night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised. I don't remember, but I documented it. <laughs> we've all had those. Stacy's 30th birthday was a complete shit show. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, we've been drinking all day. Oh, so. yeah. We started it, like, at the farmer's market, I think, didn't we? Mm-hmm, like 7 a.m. Yeah. No, we started before <laughs> that. At the library. We started oh, with shots yeah. at Fireball on the way out the yeah, door. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. was breakfast. That was that breakfast, was for sure. Yes. Then it ended at about noon at, uh, at the, the Pride like, Festival yeah. downtown. How fun. And she's like, I can't. Like, I'm, I'm so done. And she's like, doing the. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we call an Uber. And, of course, it has to be, like, the nicest Uber on the planet. It's, like, this brand new Mercedes. <laughs> yeah. And shit. she's in the back, like, laying in my mom's lap, just. <laughs> I was like, God, don't throw up in this fucking Uber. <laughs> I have to like drag her inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is in the old house. So I'm like, I'm not taking her upstairs to the bedroom. So I just like throw her on our kid's bed. <laughs> yeah. Because the kids were, I think the kids were at her mom's. Mm-hmm. And uh, about two hours later, like she's clothed, fully clothed. Later down, two hours later, she just comes like drunk, stumbling out, completely naked. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you doing? And she's like, what? Are you I'm, gonna- I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. And she like just goes upstairs to the bed and lays back down and goes to sleep. And then she's like, I was like, oh, you, she left her phone. <laughs> well, she, she was on Pornhub. <laughs> Which I never, I never, it's actually one thing I will say. I never go on porn. I just, it's not really my thing. But apparently I went on it. And? I was looking at small penis porn. <laughs> on top of that. Which I was like, which the next day Bill tells me. And I was like, no way. He's I was like, like, it's right here. Like, I'm like. <laughs> Ew, and I was like, why? He's like, I don't know. And I was like, that is so weird. Like, whoo, gonna be hard to top that 30th birthday. I know. I know. Oh. Right. Yeah. So, oh, that's yeah. That's great. Everybody has those. Yeah. But she all- still can't eat burnt ends from another night. We can talk about it later. <laughs> but. but in all fairness, though, like, I've been drinking all day, whereas Brittany had one and a half drinks and they had that experience. Yes. That's, right. mm, yes. yeah. Well, now they make, have you seen, they make those like cup condoms for when you go out? No. Yeah, like so. If you order something like a mar- uh, margarita glass, might be hard, but it's like literally like it's wrapped up. It's like it's essentially just like a condom, like it's wrapped Can up. We you get put these it on, on you, Amazon. And <laughs> yeah. You slide it, you slide it like over your drink, Open, and then it's got yeah. like a little Capri Sun diaphragm in it where you can punch a, oh a straw gosh. through it. Oh my gosh! Okay, pretty good. We're actually. gonna have to order this for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. if, uh, that could be dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Eventually, we'll have a producer running all of this stuff, so I can have them just like pull it up and we can look at it. Yeah. yeah. Look that up right now, but yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. I was like, I was like, well, that's that's weird. I was like, it's also a pretty brilliant idea. I was gonna say, why didn't I think of that? I know. Jeez. Uh, yeah. Hello, sharks. I have a, a yeah. safe bet for you. Yeah. No kidding. 
I didn't oh, know that either. Sweet. Yeah, we're going to definitely need to order those. Mm-hmm. For sure. Once I get that breathalyzer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 when does yeah. I get um, um I, I'm supposed to have it out in December. Hopefully. Okay. We'll see. Yeah. I kind of. I'm supposed to have it longer, but I appealed yeah. Yeah, to have it. So we'll, see. well, it's your first offense, too, which I'm yeah. like, that's a bit intense. They threw the book at me hard. I know. No <laughs> kidding. Yeah. So. I know people. Lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I know people that um, obviously have had DUIs before, like, numerous ones, and did not get that. Mm-hmm. So I was like, what? That's in- well, it seems like almost like a rite of passage in mm-hmm. Iowa. Like, mm-hmm. growing up in North Carolina, like, if you got a DUI, like, you're better off like murdering somebody than getting a DUI. Like I know somebody who got a DUI in high school or junior year of high school. We didn't get his license back till he was 25. Oh Mm -hmm. shit. Like they don't fuck around. But then I get to Iowa and somebody's like, Oh yeah. Like I remember when I got like my second DUI. I was like, how do you get a second one? (laughs) You know, I was like, Oh yeah. Like, I mean, I kind of get it like rurally. Sure. Because like there's no cabs or anything around out there, but I guess it's just a thing. Dang. What state was that? North Carolina. Okay, don't go to North Carolina. Yeah, I know. I just don't drink and drive in North Carolina, I guess. Even yeah. though I still did it all the fucking time. But yeah. It's definitely something uh, I've learned in my 30s now. Yeah. I'm just like, eh. It's a tough lesson to learn. Uber, yeah. It really definitely. is. Do you want another one, Brian? No, I'm good. I still have some in there. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, so we'll get back on topic here. So yes. single mom, you've mentioned you have a boyfriend. What was dating like? Start, or oh, guess, my how gosh. How did you even start getting out there then how did you kind of get comfortable and eventually find like a kind of a boyfriend well for me a lot of it was like I just didn't have time Mm -hmm. like I was working on rebuilding myself filling my cup making my kids proud being a good mom like I didn't really have time to add another mouth to feed or Mm -hmm. human to the mix um so I what I started doing is after a few months I started getting on like hinge um, and I don't think I was on Bumble for like a day and I'm like, oh, this is too much, <laughs> too much. So I did hinge and I met maybe like two or three people. I went on dates and one of them was the only one that really had potential, but it's just awful. Mm-hmm. I don't wish it on my worst enemy. Like men just like are, I don't know. They just don't want to commit. They want to have their cake and eat it too. Yeah. Like, and I understand like I'm a person with kids like that's a lot that's a big like I'm a package deal that's a lot to accept but like also like you're not gonna find like at my age you're not gonna really find a lot of people that don't already have kids like and so I feel like that's why a lot of people like do have issues committing is because it's not just one person right. it's the pool's getting smaller and yeah. shallower now yeah and somebody's probably peed in it yeah <laughs> yeah but yeah it's I, have the, I have the internet people have probably peed in it <laughs> <laughs> that's a thing um yeah it's it's uh i i after i met my third person i so i went on a couple dates out to dinner and then the third person that i talked to i ended up seeing him for like maybe three or four months and it was nice and like he kind of broke my heart a little bit but then I was like you know what it just it's not meant to be and so Mm -hmm. I just kind of deleted everything and just kind of backed off and again like tried to just focus on me stay in my lane go to the gym every day like Mm -hmm. focused on my happiness and then Eric kind of just fell in my lap we met through mutual friends and it's nothing it's unlike any other relationship I've ever had even with like my previous marriage like at one point with my marriage, like we ex- were exactly the same person. Mm-hmm. I outgrew that and mm-hmm. he was still the same person and he did not want to outgrow it. He just wanted to be that person he was when we first met. And so we just grew completely apart. We had different goals. Like I actually had goals and it, it just was very, very unhealthy. And my new Eric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I was going to address like. <laughs> Uh, is it odd dating somebody with the same name as I know, your ex-husband? I you can't fuck it up. I, I know. mean, really. Well, so true, yeah. I call the new Eric hot Eric. Mm-hmm. And when I was telling my parents about him, I was like, my mom's like, well, how do I keep it straight? And I was like, well, I call Eric, new Eric, hot Eric. And my dad, to this day, my dad is calling. He's like, what are you doing hot Eric doing this weekend? And I'm oh, like, oh, I love your dad. Okay. And my mom's like, I can't be calling him that. And uh, I forget what, sh- I gave her another name. 
to call him and it was worse than <laughs> I don't know. I like I've been on a party bus with your parents. I have a hard time believing your mom's uncomfortable she calling. Said I, know. That. I know. I was like, that's cool with it. He said <laughs> like to this day he came over to hang some shelves the other day and he's like, How's hot Eric? I'm like, Good. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Or is it? Do you, or you actually just have like an Eric tattoo that just uh, like makes I am it. actually like a stage five Eric cleaner. Clinger. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm obsessed with him. No. Um, what's funny though is I dated a guy in high school. His name was Josh. And I dated him for like six years. And oh, wow. then the next guy that I dated, his name was Josh too. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. <laughs> and my mom's like, what? You got a thing for Josh's? And <laughs> now I've moved on to Eric's. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, it's. It's hard. It's unlike any relationship that I've had. And he's just, we have so much in common. It's easy. It doesn't even feel like I have to try. And he, he knows what he's getting into and he accepts that. And, um, I will say like, he hasn't met my kids yet. He met my son like, at uh, indie race. And it was just like in passing. It wasn't anything like, like formal. Yeah. Um, and they, you know, I have a picture of them on my phone and they know that it's Eric mm -hmm. and that I say like, he's my boyfriend and they know who he is and they just haven't really met him. I just don't want to get, have any pressure on him. Right. Um, when he's ready, like I'm ready, like I'm just kind of putting the ball in his court. We've seen each other for almost 10 months, mm -hmm. so I think like the holidays coming, this is going to like motivate me, push me a little more yeah. to have that conversation. But again, like I just don't, I don't know. He's divorced too. He doesn't have any kids. Um, I just don't want to pressure him because it's a big step, mm -hmm. very big step. Because like once you meet them, like you don't go back. Right. right. Yeah. Like you start coming to family stuff. Yep. Like you can come over to my house when right. they're there. Yep. Like, mm -hmm. but also like I want him to want to do that. I don't want it right. to be like. Oh my God, your kids are awful. I right. don't want to say I wasn't with ready them. for this. But also, yes. then I kind of wonder, and I'm wondering, like, in his defense, if maybe he does want to meet your kids, but like maybe he just doesn't know how to approach it because like it's your kids. Like maybe he's thinking, well, she must not be ready if she doesn't want me to, if she doesn't want to introduce me to them. Like, have you even had the discussion with him to see? Just very briefly. Like, yeah. We, we have asked like where we stand with kids. Like, he wants them I I am open to that mm -hmm. like I'm if if it was right I mean I don't really know if I ever want to be married again I honestly don't like mm -hmm. it just left to such a sour taste in my there's just so many things that, yeah to think about um but I think I don't know it scares me because like mm -hmm. I don't like, along with school and the world, I don't want the world to touch my children. Like, I just yeah. don't want them to be hurt. I don't want them to get attached. And right, then, like, right. And then it doesn't and work out. And same with him. I don't want him to get attached and something doesn't work mm -hmm. out, you know? It's it's a big step. And I don't, like, things are so good right now that I don't want anything to mess that up. And so right. I'm worried that a big change like that would mess it up. Yeah. So. But 10 months is a long time, though. I have to say. It that, is. Because I have, um, I know somebody who, um was divorced and had a kid and then she was dating not, not multiple men but like she had a boyfriend and then they broke up had another boyfriend and they broke up but she um every time she had a boyfriend they met her kid kids and then it was just um I just remember thinking I was a lot younger at the time and I didn't have kids of my own but I remember thinking like that is a little a little like rushing because they obviously didn't work out and then yeah. yeah, and the kid yeah. would be like devastated. I was like, Yeah, what happened huh. to this guy? Or, you also yeah. don't want like your kid thinking like, oh, like I remember when mom was just like bringing men home all yes. the time. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. Yes, because then you're also putting your kids at risk. You know, because yes. you know if it's too soon, like you don't know the person, then you know. So, um, I think it's really great though that like you're taking it really slow. Yes, but I'm kind of just wondering maybe like he could be interested in meeting your kids. It's just one of those things like he doesn't want to put that pressure on you if you're not ready. Well, he, yes, I totally agree. And he is very interested. He's just a very thoughtful person. And he always, like, if I post something on my snap, he's like, oh my gosh, that's cute. Like he's always asking, you know, he knows about Clay being in therapy. And so he's like asking like, how was his day? How was he doing at school? Like he, that yeah. is like one of the things that I really love about him. Mike, my, my own, their dad, has never once to ask me what the therapists say or, yeah. you know, anything like that. Like he just, he's, he just doesn't think about stuff like that. Yeah. And hot Eric, <laughs> <laughs> um, he's thoughtful and he is, I don't know. We just, we're like the same person. He's the male version. He says this all the time. You're the girl version of me. And I'm like, yeah. well, you're the male version of me. And 
I'm really enjoying this company. Mm-hmm. So we'll get there. Yeah, sooner than later. I think also like like you said, like the holidays coming up. Like clearly, obviously, you're gonna see each other at some point, and you know, like exchange gifts. Maybe and then, I don't know. Like I just feel like something's gonna break. Like he's either gonna come to your house, meet the kids, or yes. you know what I mean. Like at yeah. some point, I think that I want. I mean, my family is, and same with you guys is a huge part of my life, mm-hmm. and his family is too. And my kids are freaking awesome. They're crazy, mm-hmm. but they're awesome. And I want to share that with him. Yeah. Like, and so I look forward to that. And also, like, my kids have only seen, like, a not good relationship between me and their dad. Mm-hmm. So it would be nice for them to see, like, they see my mom and dad. My mom and dad yeah. have been married for 40 years. But it, it would be nice for them to see me in, like, a new, healthy mm-hmm. right. relationship. Not always yes. right. under the influence of some sort. Like, yes. maybe more involved, like, playing outside. Like, just be yes. more involved with the kids in general yes. kind of thing. Well, yeah, Especially, like, them being young as well. I mean, it's how you see your parents interact with each other kind of gives you kind of your guide to how you treat relationships, exactly. right? Yep. So there's plenty of people that are terrible in relationships because they grew up with parents to treat them that way right so like be be the person at least publicly around your kids i mean if you have problems obviously like every married couple does you know we live to like we argue all the fucking time right it's It's normal we try not to do it in front of the kids every once Mm -hmm. in a while like it's whatever but um yeah like show your kids how to treat their significant other right especially when they're younger now like i said almost a in a good way your kids are younger and you're dating now as opposed to like i can't imagine like i know having to like fucking teenagers like i have a friend who uh she they weren't married but they were pretty much married and she had a teenage son and he got to know like it was hostile for a while got to know the guy like they ended up really liking each other like yeah you know and then but they of course the guy fucked it up and she left and now the the teenage son doesn't really know how to handle it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's so much pressure, like for mom and the son mm-hmm. and the the guy that maybe doesn't even have kids. Like yeah. that's a lot of pressure for him too. You mm-hmm. know, um, yeah. It's I will say that like since family is so important, to me I include my ex husband in everything. So like Monday is Clayton's birthday, and I was like, let's go out to dinner as a family of four. Like, mm-hmm. he, I have invited him to my family's Thanksgiving. His family lives in another state, right. and so I invite him because I know he doesn't have anybody, and I want to have, like, a good, mm-hmm. healthy parenting situation with him. And I want, like, I don't not like him. We just didn't work well together. Um, so that is one thing. Like, we, do, we still get family pictures together, and, you know, he gets some with just the kids. I get some with just the kids. Mm-hmm. We take a couple together. Like, that's just something that's, like, super important to me. But it – they – Clayton already saw, like, a lot of unhealthy stuff. Like, yeah. just arguing and just, you know, not sleeping in the same bed and, like, just no affection or right. any of that. Um, and so I feel like that's kind of tainted him a little mm-hmm. bit. And so I look forward to him seeing something Different. that's mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, too, um, I come from a family of divorce, and um, my situation wasn't quite – I think yours was more, like, amicable, whereas, like, to be honest, like, my mom pretty much, like, had an affair on my dad with my stepdad, and then, like, they got a divorce, and then she's been with my stepdad ever since. Thank God it's all worked out. But um, my stepdad and my dad and my mom co-parent so amazingly together. So growing up, my – we moved to North Carolina. My dad still lives in Florida, but uh, my – dad would drive up North Carolina and spend like a week with us oh. and we had a pretty big house at the time so he would stay in the guest house sure and um stay like sleep there and stuff and then come over for breakfast lunch and like, take us to school and like just hang out and yeah my friends you think it was so weird like why is your dad and your stepdad in the same and I'm like I never thought it was weird because I grew up like that was just yeah the relationship great. they had and then now, so my, my dad's here in Iowa, mm-hmm. and obviously my stepdad and my mom live here too. And like just last weekend, we went over to his mom's house, and she invited my dad and stepmom, and then my mom and stepdad. And we were just all together having dinner. That's and then great. like at one point, like my stepdad and my dad were like sharing bourbon from the same glass, oh, yeah. like just like testing it out, like talking yeah. about this. And I, I just remember looking at that, I'm like, wow, this is how awesome. like co parenting at its finest. Like you yes. really just you put your emotions aside and I know it had to be really hard like really hard for my dad because 
you know, he was the one that was kind of done dirty in the yeah. whole picture of it all. But for him to, like, swallow his pride and be like, I'm going to do what's best for my kids because right. that's what's most important. And, yeah, like, I grew up in a blended household of some sort. Yes. Right? Would you call it blended? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Like, just, yeah. So. Oh, that's great. So, that's I'm glad. so that gives me goals. <laughs> yes. I would say, well, yeah. you just talking about it makes me feel like that's how I grew up. It's yeah. like that. And I think it there, it, you can get there for sure. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And then maybe, you know, this time next year, we'll have you back on and you can tell us. Uh, tell I'm the story engaged. About how, no, I'm kidding. No, I was going to say, I was gonna say <laughs> like, so guess what happened? We got walked in on. <laughs> you ever had that happen? Um, That'll. Well, when I was married, I wasn't having sex. So, no. <laughs> um, except for the one time I got pregnant with Sawyer. <laughs> but no, spill the tea. Oh, it just happened a couple of times. Walked in on us? Or no, actually, the one time I recalled vividly was, we can't really say we got walked in on, or because it's his fault, because they were is in the old house, uh-huh. and we decided to break in the new couch. <laughs> oh, and yes. She's naked. I'm pretty sure I'm naked. She's <laughs> sitting down, and I'm about like tonsils are halfway to her cervix. And when we hear, "Mom," we're like, "Oh!" Ah! <laughs> but thankfully, though, I had a blanket over because like. It was too. Clo- it was just a little close to their room, so I was like, "Look, just in case." <laughs> Thankfully, we did that. It was still really awkward, though. But he was so groggy. I don't and think tired. you had. The bl- I think the blanket was there, but like you had to grab it. Maybe because I remember he, like, Ooh. I don't know what he no saw, clothes. but it was graphic. Yeah, I was nervous that he was gonna say something, but mm-mm. he never brought it up. I think he was too tired and just, just delirious that he just didn't even like didn't put two and two together. But oh, ever great. since then, I'm much more, much more cautious. Yeah. Yeah, we lock the door now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. His door or yours? <laughs> yeah. Both, he just in for, case. He's asked for a, a lock in his room. I'm like, no, absolutely not. Why? Not. What are you doing in there? Oh, like, you're seven. Yeah. What are you doing in there? Like, <laughs> Jeez. But, but, yeah, so we'll wrap this up. It's been, a, like I tried to tell Stacy, like an hour goes by quick when you get the mics hot. It does. You know? It's yeah. fun. So. Mm-hmm. But yeah, again, I mean, we're going to be doing this for a while. We still have, I'm, we could sit here and talk all day. I know. But <laughs> we'll, we'll save some for next time we have you on. And uh, yeah. again, if you're listening and have a story you want to tell or want to come on or just want to come on and have some fun, share uh, like kid like kid stories, dumb shit, kid mm. stories. Yeah. Uh, parents that swear at a Gmail. I'm trying to, I can't remember. Yes, parents swear at Gmail. And um, so yeah, again. Uh, this is the first episode, so nothing is out there at the present. But if, by the time this comes out, obviously there will be. So like and subscribe on the YouTube. Hit the little notification bell. Um, go to wherever you get your audio podcast, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, Podbean. There's like a trillion of them now. Um, make sure you subscribe on iTunes, especially leave a five-star review and a comment. Uh, that's really huge in the podcast world is the reviews and comments. And then uh, on Spotify now, too, you can leave a review. You don't have to leave a review. Or uh, you can leave a five-star review. You don't have to comment or anything. So, uh, yeah. So, again, Brittany, thank you so much for yeah, coming on. This was a blast. Yeah. So I hope. Uh, Should we hope do some chats? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we will. We yes. will. We will. Be, once the, this is off, we'll have to get a, a picture of doing shots for the gram. Cause yeah. It's, uh, Woo. You know, you're a gym rat. You know it's all about the uh, gram. Yeah, it is. Yep. <laughs> And so, stuff for life. <laughs> so, but yeah, again, we, we could have talked for hours. We'll have you back on. And uh, this has been Parents That Swear. I'm Bill. That's Stacy. Good night. Thanks, Thanks, guys. That was so fun. Right? Yeah. It is. It's-